The CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... of being your host on the Mystery Theatre is that it gives me the opportunity to present stories that have meant a great deal to me personally. Tales that have been bubbling up in me and aching to be told since I first read them. Such as those written by the great Russian masters of storytelling. Dostoevsky, Tolstoy, Gorky, and my beloved Anton Chekhov. And today, leaves from his book. I regret, Maria, to have to ask you to come here to identify this deceased individual. But you knew him well. Better, in fact, than anyone else in the village. I didn't wish to come. But I felt it my duty. Do you recognize this man? Can you identify him? Oh, my Lord. It is him. Oh, my fair king. Why did it have to be you? <laughs> Our drama, The School Mistress, is adapted from the classic works of Anton Chekhov for the mystery theater by James Agate Jr. and stars Patricia Elliott. I shall return shortly with Act One. Serial introduces Mr. Buster Crab, film actor and author of Buster Crab's arthritis exercise book. I wrote a book on relieving arthritis pain, and I recommend icy hot cream in the tube. Rub it on. Icy Hot's penetrating warmth reaches way down inside to help relieve minor pain, while a feeling of coolness soothes your skin. I'm convinced that greaseless Icy Hot cream will give you fast, effective relief that lasts for hours. Use only as directed. Fight back against high heating costs this winter with an energy-efficient Aladdin kerosene heater from True Value Hardware Stores. Hi, Pat Summerall to say the 9,600 BTU Temprite 9 Radiant Heater and the 15,200 BTU Equator Convection Heater are both UL listed and operate for pennies an hour. And you'll find them value price now at participating True Value Hardware stores and home centers. Some locations restrict sale or use. Check local codes for permitted uses and read instructions carefully. <laughs> Never would believe where those Keebler cookies come from. They're baked by little elves in a hollow tree. Mr. Keebler, is my mother around here somewhere? No, sir. Why'd you ask? When I was walking through the woods and suddenly I smelled cookies baking. Probably our Keebler chocolate fudge cookies. And then I saw these cookies cooling on the window ledge of this hollow tree. We bake them in here. And then I tasted one. <laughs> yeah, my mother must have baked these cookies. Not these cookies. These are Keebler chocolate fudge cookies. Two big chocolatey cookies with a generous helping of creamy fudge in between. Mm. My mother always told me, Ernest, don't skimp on the fudge. And delicious. I'm sure your mother's an excellent baker, but Keebler chocolate fudge cookies are baked by L. You sure? Positive. Well, do you mind if I just wait here by your tree in case my mom shows up? If you think Keebler cookies taste like cookies someone's mother baked, remember, elves have mothers too. Mom, are you in this tree? One of the most touchingly tragic creatures Anton Chekhov ever created. It is winter in a small Russian village. Maria Vasilevna has dismissed her classes for the day, has put away the slate, and stored her precious books inside her table. I'm coming. Oh, okay, quickly, let me inside. The snow has fallen between my collar and my neck, sitting up there in my cart. It was fierce driving over here, Maria. But what are you doing here at all, Senor? <laughs> I don't go to town to collect my salary until the end of the month. That's a week away. Uh, I am here on, a, on an unfortunate mission. I, I have come to fetch you. Oh, what? Uh, there Why? has been an unfortunate accident. To whom? Not one of my pupils? Uh, no, no, to Hanov. Oh, thank you. 
Colonel. Yes. So they sent for me to fetch you. Uh, what happened to him? No, please, get your coat. We must go. But why should I go? The, the commissioner asked me to, to ask you to help identify him. Now, I know it's gruesome, but you are the only one, Maria Vachelian. Okay. It's not possible. Well, I'm afraid it is. Will you do it? Please. I must sit down. This is terrible. I don't understand why Sergei has to be identified. Uh, don't, don't they know it is he? No, not positively. Uh, as for me, I never looked at the men that closely, so the commissioner didn't ask me. And the other members of the Zen first school board to which Sergei donated his time. The other examiners, won't they, come forward? No, not one of them is available. They have gone on to other villages to give the teachers their examination. Tanya, are you saying you personally would not recognize... Sergei Hanov, if you saw him. Well, I have hardly ever driven him. He has no need for me. He has his own coaches and horses. He's passed me on the road. We wave. What makes them think it could be Sergei? Well, they're not sure. No one in the town hall is sure. He's only been living here a year, and not many people got to know him. You see, the body, well, that is, it's, it's difficult to recognize because the face is... Has been, uh... And the commissioner is demanding I go and identify this person when it doesn't even look like Sergei Hanov. What happened? Was it a hunting accident? Oh, no one is exactly sure what happened. <sighs> I am very upset. To be told the dear man is dead is one thing difficult enough. Uh, I know, I know, I know. But his dear face is not recognizable. Can you? I don't know that I have the strength to look at him now. No, you don't have to go. I will tell the commissioner it was not possible for you. It's not emotionally possible. They will have to find someone else. Besides, it probably isn't even Hanov. How did this awful thing happen? He was so young. No older than me. Do you know what happened? Well, nobody really knows. And if they do, they haven't come forward. He was found yesterday morning in his house. In his house? Then it must be him. Have you decided? Please, I beg you, Maria. If you are coming, put on your coat and we will start. The snow is coming down so thickly it will completely hide the road. And I will never find the way back to town. I'm coming. Poor Sergei. The dear lost soul that he was. Uh, a man like Sergei Hanov, with all that wealth, a man with nothing to do all day but walk through his vast house, whistling or playing chess with his old footman. You speak as if Sergei Hanov deserved to die because he played chess and whistled in his house. Well, it could have been a robbery. If a man has wealth and doesn't put it to use or guard it, he's asking for trouble. He was killed for his money. It, you, it was the mayor's suggestion. The commissioner, he doesn't agree. But no one knows. As I said, they're not even sure it's him. Uh, I hope for your sake it isn't. Why do you say that? I feel pity for a dead man, even if he is a stranger. Well, uh, Sergei Hanov liked you. I mean, if it is Hanov, and uh, you like him. I wish to think and pray until we reach town. Could you please keep silent so that I may do that? <laughs> the first day I met you, Sergei. It was not as Semyon remembers it, but before. <laughs> At the examination of teachers. A volunteer member of the school board. You had dressed in all new clothes. I thought you very attractive. I was embarrassed sitting beside you in that hall. I don't know why. Ah, you were so different from the frigid and sensible examiners who came once a year. <laughs> You were so courteous and deliberate. Uh, we're almost there, Maria Vasilevna. <laughs> I must say, you have great courage. <laughs> uh, may I help you out of this way? We had arrived at the town hall, which was also the police station, marriage register, and so forth. Hey, hey, careful, careful. It's very icy here. You cannot believe I'm going to see him. Why did they ask me? It would be someone else. Sergei's gone on a trip, that's all. Oh, 
What does it is him? How can I go ahead and say that, that is him? Ah, uh, mademoiselle, may I assist you? It's all a nightmare. I shall wake up. I have fallen asleep in the schoolroom. Sergei Hanov is alive, and he is going to ask me to marry him. Hey, hey, Commissioner, our teacher is a little shaky. Uh, you can understand the situation. Hey, I suggest you wait a little before subjecting her to... Uh, of course. But no more than ten minutes. The police are anxious to begin their investigation. But they cannot begin before they know who it was that was murdered. Then they can look for possible suspects. Commissioner, I am ready. I have rested enough. Well, I will take you and show you the body. <laughs> I was sitting here thinking, uh, this is all a dream. I'm afraid it is not. Please, walk along with me. May I take your arm? You see, it was yesterday they found this man in the house of Sergei Hanov. It was natural, therefore, to surmise that the man was indeed Hanov. Unfortunately, there has been violence, and he is not entirely recognizable. Death, we believe, was caused by a gun in such a manner that a good deal of the features of the deceased have been destroyed. Here we are. I want you to know how much the mayor and the town council and I appreciate your coming here voluntarily, as it were. <sighs> Is the person there, over there, under that sheet? I'm afraid so. We will just step a little closer, and if you wish, you may hold on to the back of that chair. There, yes. These matters are never easily taken, especially by a lady such as yourself, a respected member of the community. For how long have you been teaching here, mademoiselle? Thirteen years. Schoolmistress for thirteen years. Oh, think of that. Well, I will now draw the sheet from the face of this unfortunate victim. Do you recognize this man? Can you identify him positively? Oh, my Lord. Yes, that is him. Why did it have to be you? This man is Sergei Hanov. Yes. You are certain, mademoiselle. You could not be mistaken. Oh, yes. Even though his poor face is turned away, there is... Something that makes me certain. Ah, oh, there is good. You see that little gold earring in his left ear? He only wore one. I never knew anyone before to do that. Certainly never a man. It is him. No question you have identified him. I keep repeating that because most of the face is turned away from you. There is unfortunately nothing there to see. As I said before, a gun had blown half of his face away. Oh, Sergei, my darling. What have they done to you? <sighs> Simeon, Simeon, come quickly. Maria Vasilyevna has fainted. It's not true, Father, is it? Tell me it's not true. Well, my little Maria, I wish it were not. This is a great deal for a child to tend to bear or for her father. Your beautiful mother has been taken from us by the Lord. It is his will. Why did mother die? She didn't wish to, child. But even though we are used to the cold weather here in Moscow, sometimes the cold winds out and your mother... Your mother that day, she walked along the Neva. She caught a cold. And then that cold became pneumonia. What will I do? You will study and you will learn... And then one day you will become an excellent teacher. Perhaps even a schoolmistress. Schoolmistress, Maria Vasilyevna, please wake up. It is I, Semyon, who beg you. Wake up, wake up. She is opening her eyes. Are you all right, mademoiselle? What happened? I'm afraid it was too much of a strain for you when you fainted. May I help you to your feet? Oh, thank you. Simeon, it was a strange thing. I, I saw my father on the day my mother died. I was a little girl. <sighs> May I sit somewhere and have a glass of water, please? Simeon, in my office there is brandy. Take Mademoiselle in there, sit her down, and give her the brandy. Where is your office, Commissioner? Through that door. Take care of the lady. 
I must go to the police in charge. Oh, what a splendid office the commissioner has. You, you sit there. I, I'll bring you some brandy. It was only last April. <laughs> and here it is, the middle of winter. I remember the day he overtook us on the road. I was driving you to the Azovia, into this building here. In fact, to get your salary check for the month. Oh, actually, Simeon, I met Sergei Hanoff before that day. He was one of the examiners of the school board. Oh, everything is jumbled up in my mind. Yes, of course. One doesn't do this every day. If it only could be sorted out and put together straight. Oh, life is hard, Samuel. Uh, here, here, drink this. It will help. Maria takes the small glass of brandy and holds on to it. Outside the wind whistles and the snow falls. She sits in the commissioner's office. Everything about her seems poised, as if it would shatter. She shivers from the cold and puts the brandy to her lips. It warms her, but it cannot stop everything from appearing unreal. I shall return shortly with Act Two. Schoolmistress of a district many kilometers from Moscow has identified a murdered man as Sergei Hanov. Someone, perhaps, with whom she was in love. Semyon, the driver of the sleigh who brought her to the police station, has given her a brandy to calm her. Yes, I too can only think of him alive. I don't understand how he could be that body lying under a sheet. <laughs> that day in April was the first time he ever spoke to me. I remember. I will remember forever. Spring had suddenly come to Mother Russia. Half past eight in the morning, sitting in front of the cart, Semyon holding the reins. <laughs> Are you angry with me? Angry with you? Of course not. <laughs> I was just thinking, how too familiar is this road from the school to the town and back? Yes, uh, well, all the roads become familiar when you travel them long enough. And uh, this muddy path to the Azovia is no exception. I've been schoolmistress for 13 years, and heaven only knows how many times you've driven me to the post office, the town hall, to collect my salary to buy food and back to the schoolhouse. Well, everyone says it is good money in being a schoolmistress. People say a lot of stupid things. Money, money. Uh, there are those that have it, and there are those who have little or none and live from day to day. <laughs> I envy those who have money and don't have to work for it. I don't know anyone like that. <laughs> Perhaps in Moscow, but not here. Well, uh, what about uh, Sergei Khanov? I'll wager you he has never done a day's work in his life. Well, how can you say that? He does all kinds of charitable work. He is also on the teacher's examining board. Uh, uh, you call that work. They meet once a year. Please, Semyon, stop talking. Let me alone with my thoughts. Oh, I, I, I'm sorry for you. are not in a very good mood today. Huh? I shouldn't be cross with you. Uh, are you more sad today, or is it my imagination? I'm still a young woman. <laughs> and yet I feel I have lived out here for a hundred years. I can imagine no other future for me than the school and this road to the town and back again and again and again. Well, you know, you're very well liked by everyone. Well, thirteen years. <laughs> and then another thirteen years. And another thirteen years. Well, you know, you read somewhere that it's an unlucky number, thirteen. But I don't believe it, no, no. You are an educated woman. There is no such thing as luck, is there? Am I right? No such thing as luck. Mm. Even before I came to Viazovia and took the post as schoolmistress, I had tried to forget my past life. When I had a father and mother and we lived in Moscow, uh, in a big apartment near the Red Gate. Now it is vague, as seen through a cloud. Mother died first, and father. 
ten years. It, it, it's that good for nothing, Sergei Hanna, driving right behind the flight of the wind. Mm-hmm. He's the only one in the county well off enough to afford a four horse carriage. Oh, 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 I'm pulling over to the roadside to let this maniac pass. <laughs> Look back there. Oh, that idiot is falling up. Now he has stopped his carriage next to us. The child will dream. Well, they hung off his handsome. People say he drinks. Oh, he must be lonely. He has no wife. But he looks at me all the time. Always so polite. Good morning, mademoiselle. Good morning. You're driving to town, I suppose. Yes, I am. <laughs> well, I'm going to visit Baptiste. But I'm told he's probably not at home. Yes, I have heard that. He, he is away a great deal. He has a lumber mill, but he stays there when it's spring. I want to get him to volunteer to be on the school board. Everyone must do something for education. <laughs> a duty. Would you agree, Mademoiselle Vazilev? No. Ah, I am not a judge. Everything about the school is so unbusinesslike. The council does nothing. No one was there when I went yesterday. I've been asking them for two years to dismiss the watchman. Oh, this is the first I've heard about it. He's rude to me. He hits the school boys. No one cares. I'll take care of it. Let me take care of it. Well, I'm going on ahead. If you like, you can follow me off the high road to the village. It's faster. Hey, that by road is very muddy. I, I came that way this morning. <laughs> you just follow me. Uh, nobody listens anymore. Everybody knows everything better than I do. Yeah. 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 Well, I suppose we might as well follow him and use his tracks and trust we don't sink into the mud. Mm, Sergei is really handsome. Here we are, tagging along behind his grand carriage with four horses. Why does he live out here? So far from anything. <laughs> when he could live in St. Petersburg or London or Rome. Oh, uh, why does a rich man take a bad road to the village? What a road this is. They could smash a carriage. Stop. Whoa, stop. Uh. Driver, I have done you a disservice. Uh, Mr. Hanoff, I am not to be called driver. My name is Semyon. Mademoiselle, forgive me. I thought this side road would be quicker, but it's, well, it's a swamp. The mud is that thick. And now I've looked ahead, and if you keep to your right, it gets drier. Oh, Mademoiselle, you will forgive me. Personally, the mud had nothing to do with you. <laughs> Au revoir. I turn off the road up there to the left. You stay to the right. I know this road. You don't have to tell me. Mademoiselle Vasilievna, I shan't forget to bring up the matter of the watchman at the next council meeting. It's a promise. Sergei Hanna. Mm. He drinks. This lovely man is going to ruin for no reason. If I were his wife <laughs> or his sister, I could devote my whole life to saving him from ruin. His wife. Ah. I think of love, of beautiful eyes, of something which will never be his wife. Life is making me grow old and coarse, ugly and awkward. We're here, my uh, Vasilyevna. This isn't dear Sylvia. Oh, no. You're not stopping at the tavern again, Semyon. Step down, please. Yeah. Uh, Theodore is tired. You know, all the drivers stop at Nizhnya Gorodistia. <laughs> Mademoiselle, don't look so glum. We aren't staying long. We stopped here before. Just long enough for refreshment. I hate it when we stop here. All these drivers and the smell of vodka and tobacco. Uh, you pre- be reasonable. Yeah. My poor horse. She's exhausted. Uh, that smell. I'll never get used to it. Ah, there, there. Was that so bad, huh? We didn't stay long. Theodore is refreshed and so am I. And you had tea, huh? The way you call Sergei Hanoff names... You shouldn't. Oh, you like him, don't you? What are you talking about? Because he's rich, you look at him. Isn't that so? Are you talking about Sergei Hanov? Yes, I'm talking about Sergei Hanov. 
You would never notice a man like me who works hard 365 days in the year. Works. Not talking or writing things on paper. You would never notice me. But, Kenyon, I have known you for ten years. But I said Hanoff for less than one. You've never spoken to me like this before. Well, there is a time when one must speak out to what is on one's mind. Well, I wish you would concentrate on your driving. Kenyon, where are you driving this car? I... Take the road to the right. Well, I know what I'm doing. Even though I'm not good enough for you, I know what I am doing. What makes you say you're not good enough? I, I don't like that talk. Everyone is good enough. Everyone, do you hear? If there were no Sergei Khanov, I might be good enough. Huh? Kenyon, for some reason you are angry with me. You are not taking the road to the right. It's the one to the bridge. Well, we can go this way just as well. I can cross the river right up there. You see that? It's not that deep. Why are you frightening me? This is a cart, not a boat. Why don't we cross by the bridge like everyone else? Well, you never did this before. Ten years we've taken the bridge. Well, you'll drown the horse. I am not like everyone else, mademoiselle, as you will soon find out. Look, there's Sergei Hanov driving his coach and four to the bridge. Yes, with four horses in the carriage, he can't do what I can do. So he didn't find Buckmist at home. Uh, here, here, we, we, we're at the edge of the river. Oh, oh I can't do it. Oh, oh Kenyon, be sensible. Please don't try to cross the river from here. Go back to the bridge. Look, 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 you cross there on the other side. Do you see the fresh tracks of wheels coming out of the water going up to the bank? That means I am not the only one who has crossed at this spot today. Yes, so have I in August. When the river is dry, Semyon, please, I beg you, it's at least 50 feet across. Look how rapidly the water flows. I can do anything I set my mind to. I am not a nimble, family coward who has to use this bridge. Get me up. Go, get me up, Theodora. You heard me. Move. Move, go, get the cross. Go. Go and don't stop, Theodora. Why have you stopped? Oh, the water is up to our belly. Go on, Theodora. Go on, it's not much further. The water is coming in at my feet. Everything will be ruined. Hey, go on, Theodora. Keep pulling. You're almost there. Oh, this is madness, Theodora. I don't understand what you're up to. You have never behaved like this before. I want to prove to you what a man is like. A real man. Not some pampered person in a coat. For who has to use a bridge to get across a river? And see, what did I tell you? Huh? You see how easy it was? Well, it takes his courage, and we have saved three kilometers by fording the river. Oh, what are you talking about, you fool? Look at me. Is this the way I can march into the Board of Education and request my salary check? What happened to you, Mademoiselle Vassilievna? Did you fall into the water? No, oh, no, no. Then you will dry out in no time. Eh? By the time we get to Vyazovia, I assure you. My shoes are full of water. Oh, my dress. Look at it. Oh, the sleeves, too, and the sugar. And, oh, the bag of flour I bought. All wet. Ruined. Your behavior is really beyond me. Why do I keep thinking of Sergei Hanov? Oh, what a beautiful name Sergei is. Oh, my Lord in heaven. It has suddenly come to me. I'm thinking about April last. This is the present. It is winter. I am sitting in the office of the commissioner. And Sergei is dead. Life for me is over. How can I go on? between the schoolmistress of the small town and the wealthy young man who did nothing but play chess and volunteer time with the school board. Was there an exchange of vows or promises, kept or broken? And the young Sergei is dead now, killed. But why? And by whom? I shall return shortly with Act Three. turns of the road that muddy April morning, the mad crossing of the river seems not to be as contorted as the words and thoughts of Semyon, the peasant driver of the cart. He has confessed his jealousy of Sergei Hanov, and almost confessed his affection for the schoolmistress Maria. 
They reach the railroad crossing just outside of town. Bad luck. A minute earlier, and we would have been able to cross the tracks before the barrier came down. Uh, where are you going, Maria Vasilievna? I'm getting out of this cart. I want to stand over there and watch the train. I must get as close to trains as I can. If I could be on one of them, with some place to go far from here, a new life. That lady, standing on the platform between those two first-class carriages. It's mother. Oh, what an uncanny resemblance. The brow, the same beautiful hair. Oh, oh. oh mother. What has happened to your little Maria? May I offer you a handkerchief, mademoiselle? Oh, Miss Johanna, but I didn't see you. My carriage is right behind Simeon's. And one has to wait until the gate opens. I couldn't help noticing you putting your hands to your eyes. Uh, <coughs> there's a great deal of soot near the railroad. Thank you. I will, Barrett. I like to get as close to trains as I can. Whenever one is passing, I stop and look. I thought a gentleman of your position could travel anywhere. Oh, that's not quite accurate. Moscow is the place I would prefer to be. But I can never return there ever again. What brought tears to my eyes was seeing a lady on that train who reminded me of my dear mother. Oh, she has passed away? And my father. As the train went by, I suddenly had this vivid picture of my father and mother, our flat in Moscow. <laughs> I had big tails then. The aquarium with little fish. Would you believe it, Mr. Hanno? The sound of the train was the sound... Of our piano. Oh, I miss music out here also. Well, it was miraculous those few moments as the train went by. It was 13 years ago. I was young, well-dressed, in a bright, warm room, among my friends. But here... <laughs> Mademoiselle, I would beseech you to permit me to call upon you, and perhaps in time... I could be your friend. Ah, uh, yes, here you are. Yes, they're going to lift the barrier in a minute. And the train's long gone. And still that gate is down. Very, very slow and lazy in their duties at this crossing. Ah, it is, yes, 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 yes. Come along, Maria Vasilievna. Au revoir, mademoiselle. I shall pay you a visit if I may. And please, here, keep my handkerchief. I shall return it to you when we meet the next time. But I must wash and iron it. Are you coming? Don't wash the tears off. I'd like to keep those. I do have tears over the past. Mistakes, only mistakes. Well, au revoir. Sergei Hanov called on me several times. He confessed to me what he called his mistakes. He was still married. His wife was ill and would never recover. But he saw to it she was well taken care of in Moscow. And one day, he said goodbye to her and left. I had never been friendly with a married man before, but by the time I learned of his sick wife, it was too late. I was already in love with him. I know you're inside your house, Sergei Hanov, so come to the door and let me in. Simeon, I didn't order a cart. Or are you delivering something? To well, I am delivering something in a way, yes. Well, what is it? Something on my mind, sir. What is it you wish? To talk with you. I would like to come in. Of course. course. Nothing simpler. Come in. Well, now. What is it, my good man? Well, first of all, I am not your good man. Monsieur Hanov, you have been living in the Zoria for a not a long time, and perhaps you do not understand the way we citizens of this part of the country feel. I grant you that, Simeon. And I'm going to save you a great deal of time. By not pretending ignorance of what you wish to say. Let me help you to say it. You are concerned because Mademoiselle Vesselievna and I have been seeing a great deal of one another, and you don't like it. Uh, I received this letter from my brother, who works in the Hall of Records in Moscow. And uh, he writes me that uh, Fyodor Eshanov, formerly of number 44 Nevsky Prospect, Moscow, has moved to the village of Yazovia, that he has a wife in a sanitarium in Odessa, Madame Hanov is a long excuse. You simple-minded peasant. How dare you spy on me? 
I have never denied anything or told anyone about my life. How dare you? Oh, well, I was not aware, sir, that making inquiries as to the new residence of our town was going beyond the protection of the law. You fool. What are you talking about? I mean protecting an innocent young woman from the intentions of... I man. You may leave. Go to the door and close it behind you. I have listened to enough. The friendship that young lady and I bear for one another is no one's business. Now get out. That's all right, I will leave. But you should know, Monsieur Khanov, that I shall make the contents of this letter known, Tonaya Vasilievna. And that it should put an end to this friendship, as you call it. Maria already knows that I am married. I don't believe that. She has known for some time. And I don't have to apologize to anyone, let alone a simple minded driver of carts. And I'll tell you something. If I learn that in any way you are annoying the young lady with your disclosures and innuendos, I shall have no hesitation to kill you. Oh, so that's it. Huh? Have a good look at those guns on the wall and the pistols below them. They are all oiled and ready for use. So be careful, or you will find me at your doorstep without an appointment. <laughs> Sergei told me about the visit from Semyon, and it frightened me. He told me there was nothing I need fear. Huh? It was my birthday. Just five months to the day when we had first met at the school board examination, and Sergei himself had prepared a dinner for us in his vast house. Uh, just the two of us. To your health, my dear. Yes. To us. Happy birthday, my dearest. Thank you. Or was the dinner to your liking? Oh, yes, yes. I think there's nothing like candlelight to show off a woman's beauty. Oh, what is it, Maria? You're still not worried about that simpleton. I haven't seen him about town. No, he's still in the village. Has he, uh, I mean, has he annoyed you in any way? No, we hardly talk anymore. And since it's vacation time, I don't need him to drive me to town for my salary. He hasn't been around here either. Sergei tried to understand he is not bad. He is not evil. He only came to you to... to threaten me. I know. But you notice, my dear, I have opened the gun cabinet. And if he tries anything, I have a loaded pistol in every room. Guns won't solve anything. Sergei, couldn't you meet with him? Explain about your wife. He only wants to protect me. He needn't bother. I can protect you far better than anyone else. Can you? Do you doubt it? Maria, darling... What kind of a question is that? Nothing. What is it you want to say to me? Well, I thought this was going to be a happy occasion. Your birthday. Our love. A celebration of both. Well, there is something I can tell. Ah, oh, darling Maria, I know you. Don't hide things from me. What is it? What troubles my little schoolmistress? It's nothing. It's not your responsibility. Well, if it touches our life in any way, I want to know. I love you. And we will be married one day. Yes, one day. But in the meantime, however long that is, what can you do? Huh? I think to myself, how many times in the past 13 years, and soon enough it will be 14, how many times have I been driven to town to collect my little salary, and how many times do I have to stop to rest Semyon's horse, stop at that tavern and listen to those crude people drinking and making horrible jokes? Well, why haven't you told me this before? There's no reason why I can't drive you to the village on these occasions. And have more people talk than are talking already. Huh. So I ask myself, will this dull life that I despise go on forever? I'm filling your glass of mine. And I must say, Maria, that you're not very flattering. I thought that you and I were certainly not leading a dull life. My, my, come. Raise your glass and let us drink to the two of us. To the three of us. What? What did you say? I drink to the three of us. Sergei, I'm going to have your baby. <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'll get Peter to come and clean up the mess. Sergei, I- I'm sorry if I have upset you. Oh, not at all. <laughs> of course not. Oh, my goodness, then. Breaking out all from perspiration. I became very nervous, too, when the doctor told me that it was so. Uh, does he, uh, does the doctor know how far along? I mean... He doesn't have to. I know. My baby will be born in four months, perhaps a little less. So now you understand what I had on my mind, why perhaps I was uh, so quiet, too quiet on my birthday. A birthday? Maria, listen to me. You must know that if it were at all possible, I would marry you tomorrow. 
Uh, I want you to believe yes, that. Yes, yes. I, I believe that, Sergei. The day they buried Sergei Hanoff, I stood beside Semyon in the courtyard. No one had been formally accused of shooting Sergei to death. Semyon and I looked at one another, and I realized that each of us suspected the other had killed Sergei. But only one of us knew for sure. I was all packed to take the train the next morning to Moscow where I would have my baby. So the funeral was for Semyon and myself a farewell. The commissioner was also in the churchyard. He beckoned to Semyon. Semyon, I understand you have been in touch with your brother who is employed in the Hall of Records in Moscow. Mm, that's so, commissioner. We are very close. You were inquiring as to the background of the deceased? Yes, sir. There was only one answer to your inquiry? No, 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 no. I received another letter from my brother a week ago. Well, I'm glad you're telling me the truth. That's sensible. And the second letter stated that your brother had been mistaken. That Sergei Hanov, who moved from 44 Nevsky Prospect to our town, was not married. Had no wife in the sanatorium. That he was, in fact, a bachelor. Uh, yes, I, uh, I see you know everything. No, not everything. Did you discuss the contents of this letter with anyone? No, I didn't. You didn't mention the contents of the second letter to Maria Vasilyevna, who is standing over there? No, no. Why should I do that? Because she and the deceased had been, uh, shall we say, intimate. Because, shall we say, Hanov was pretending to be married and therefore... Marriage with our schoolmistress was out of the question. Commissioner, I told no one what I know. I'll stake my life on that. You may have to, Simeon. Well, you will be hearing from me. The baby is alive and well. A girl. I called her Natasha after my mother. She will have coal black hair, just like my mother. I have a post in the Moscow school system, and I tell everyone I am a widow. That my husband was a hero, a courageous man who died in battle. I think you can guess why I, as an actress would be attracted to the works of the great Russian writers. I might say that there is something of Maria in me. The restlessness, the desire for a better life, the dreams, and most of all, I think, the poetry of that schoolmistress. Before I leave you, I want to tell you what others have thought, in words far better than mine. I'll be back with those words shortly. talking about those who appreciated Anton Chekhov long before any of us were even born. The great Tolstoy called him an incomparable artist, an artist of life. He has created new forms of writing. Tolstoy then added, it's impossible to compare him with other Russian writers, with Tegenius, with Dostoevsky, or with me, Tolstoy. Chekhov has his own special form. Like the Impressionists, our cast included Patricia Elliott, Earl Hammond, and Lloyd Batista. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. And now, a preview of our next tale. You must not be taken alive, either. You know that. Goodbye. Goodbye, little Patty Kate. Goodbye, Chief. Wait. Why do we say goodbye? We are not leaving each other. We are embarking on a great journey together. Is that not so? Oh, yes, yes. But we cannot go this way. Which way? Pick up the telephone. But... At once. <laughs> Tell them I want to see Martin Bormann. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by White Westinghouse Appliance Company. This is Tammy Grimes, 
inviting me to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time. Pleasant dreams.